the key theme of multiculturalism is diversity within unity. And a multiculturalist stance implies not just a toleration of, but a, a positive endorsement of communal diversity based on the right of different cultural groups to recognition and respect. The emergence of multiculturalism has been strengthened by the trend towards international migration since 1945, and in particular, originally the end of colonialism, with many Western countries becoming far less homogeneous in terms of their population, with the arrival of significant numbers of immigrants. This process becomes significant again since the collapse of communism and the increase in economic migration, the advent of what some described as a hypermobile planet through the movements such as refugees, again, the collapse of communism and the continued trend towards economic globalization. The term itself can be used in a number of ways. Uh, one way is as a descriptive term, which simply refers to cultural diversity that arises from the existence within a society of two or more groups whose beliefs and practices generate a distinct collective identity. And in purely descriptive terms, some statistics and data from, from the latest sentence, you can, or census, you can talk about multiculturalism in purely descriptive terms, what you see, what you see around you. Uh, second way it's used is in an informative sense to describe some governmental responses to such diversity, such as ensuring equality of opportunity between and amongst groups, but also trying to adapt the structure of government itself to reflect the ethnic, uh, religious, and cultural groups in society. And the term used for this is consortialism, and it can be seen in the practice of states such as Switzerland, Belgium, uh, and Northern Ireland. The third way it's used is as a normative term, uh, which is the way we would discuss it in our syllabus. And a normative term is something that's held up as an ideal model or standard. And in this sense, multiculturalism implies a a positive endorsement and a celebration of communal diversity based on the rights of different cultural groups to respect and recognition, and also the alleged benefits to the wider society of this moral and cultural diversity. And while many would argue that multiculturalism is not really a coherent ideology in its own right, as, as I said in Hayward's book, it's more a, an arena for ideological debate than a fully fledged ideology. Uh, it does have a number of core themes as identified in the syllabus, and these are post-colonialism, identity and culture, minority rights, and diversity. Multiculturalists would argue that subordination and marginalization and disadvantage in certain groups have deeper roots than just either legal or political or social inequality. Multiculturalists would argue that subordination and marginalization are cultural phenomena. And multiculturalists argue that to address this, what's needed is a positive endorsement, even a, a celebration of cultural difference, allowing marginalized groups to reassert themselves by claiming an authentic sense of, of cultural identity. The foundations for this approach uh, were laid by post-colonialism. Indeed, multiculturalism itself can be seen as, as an offshoot of, of post-colonialism. And post-colonialism sought to overthrow the cultural and psychological dimensions of colonial rule. Colonial rule is not just about a physical subjugation, but even when the colonial powers had left, there was still this element of cultural and psychological subjugation. And multiculturalists recognize this inner subjugation can persist long after the physical colonial power has been removed. And a major aim of post-colonialism was to establish or to re-establish the legitimacy of non-Western and, and sometimes anti-Western political ideas or tradition. Re-establishing the legitimacy of one's own cultural identity was a means of confronting or challenging the dominant culture that often emphasizes its own superiority. In effect, people can seek emancipation through rediscovering their own native culture. One of the most influential post-colonial texts was, was Said's Orientalism, which offered a critique of what was termed Eurocentrism. Eurocentrism is the practice of viewing the world from a European perspective, with an implied belief, either consciously or subconsciously, in the preeminence of European culture. 
and Orientalism highlighted the extent to which Western cultural and political hegemony had been maintained through the persistence of elaborate and demeaning stereotypes such as the inscrutable Chinese or the lustful Turks. While nationalists such as Gandhi advocated a policy of non-violence and self-sacrifice to overthrow colonial domination, others such as Fanon, decolonization was not merely a, a political process, but he argued that only the cathartic experience of violence was powerful enough to overcome this inner subjugation and achieve us term psychopolitical regeneration. The next core theme of multiculturalism is that of culture and identity. And multiculturalism has some parallels with nationalism in that multiculturalism holds that culture is essential to political and social identity. And as we mentioned before, multiculturalism addresses the politics of cultural self-assertion. From this view a pride in one's culture and especially a public acknowledgement of cultural identity gives people a sense of social and historical rootedness and leads to those people contributing to a stable and peaceful society. The opposite where you have a weak or a fractured sense of cultural identity leaves people feeling isolated and confused and can lead to disillusion and often disengagement from society. As such, this cultural politics has been shaped by, by two forces, communitarianism and identity politics. Communitarianism holds that our identities and values are constituted through our community. There are no, in, in the term, unencumbered selves. Culture is essential to human identity. We are embedded in a particular set of social, cultural, institutional, and ideological contexts. In fact, we cannot be understood outside of society, but are intrinsically shaped by the context in which we live and develop. Communitarianism is clearly at odds with liberalism, and it advances a critique of liberal universalism and promotes a shift towards particularism. Sandel, in particular, argued that the, the liberal idea of the abstract individual, the unencumbered self, is merely a recipe for a rootless atomism. Only groups and communities can provide a genuine sense of identity and moral purpose. Identity politics, the second thing that shapes multiculturalism, and identity politics sought to address the marginalization and subordination of groups by redefining group identity from a damaging cultural stereotype through reshaping identity to give the group a sense of pride and self-respect. During the 60s and 70s, the focus of identity politics was on minority groups in society who were perceived to be subordinated or disadvantaged in relation to the majority groups. And they sought to counter this subordination or, or oppression. For example, the emergence of the gay rights movement, now the second wave of feminism and the black power movement. Multiculturalism, therefore, is clearly builds on and in some respects is a, is a development of this. Uh, in the face of increased immigration or hypermobile planet, identity politics has come to encompass the perceived marginalization and subordination of minority cultures in society. And in the same way as with other groups such as gay people and women, it seeks to address the marginalization and subordination of cultural groups by redefining group identity from the damaging cultural stereotype through reshaping identity to give the group a sense of pride and self-respect. The third core theme is that of minority rights uh, and the three kinds of minority rights identified by Will Kimlicker are self-government rights, polyethnic rights and representation rights. Minority rights are distinct from the traditional liberal concept of rights in that they belong to, to groups rather than individuals. They are collectivist rather than individualist. They also are special in that they are specific to the group to which they belong and that they will be, be meaningless to other groups. For self-government rights, Kimlicke, um applied these to what he called national minorities, indigenous people who are territorially concentrated they may possess a shared language and evidence of a meaningful way of life across the full range of human activities. I suppose, in other words, a common culture. And Kimlick is Canadian, and he's writing particularly about the Canadian experience and the self-government rights given to the Quebecois in Canada, the Inuits in northern Canada, 
but it could also apply to the Native Americans in America who've been granted uh, a large degree of autonomy on the reservations and it also applies you could describe it as a lesser extent to devolution in the United Kingdom, Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland. So first minority rights were self-government rights. In a way, they are easier to address, or easier to deal with when you have groups, national minorities who are territorially concentrated. It is more challenging if minority cultures are spread throughout the general population. So a second kind of minority rights would be polyethnic rights. These are rights that help ethnic groups and religious minorities to express and maintain their cultural distinctiveness. Examples, the most often quoted examples, would include the exemption of uh, Jews and Muslims from, from slaughtering laws, you know, halal meat and, and kosher meat, from Muslim girls sometimes being excused from particular dress codes, and the exemption of Sikh men from wearing motorcycle helmets. It is argued that these exemptions from the normal liberal concept of the rule of law universally applied, these polyethnic rights, help ethnic groups maintain their cultural distinctiveness. Uh, and they are special rights. They make no sense to apply those rights to anybody else outside those particular groups. And the third minority right is that of representation rights. And these attempt to redress under representation of minority or disadvantaged groups in public life. And Kimlicka justified the use of positive discrimination, or in America it's called affirmative action. For example, the use of quotas or appointments reserved for certain groups in order to ensure that those groups access and benefit from full and equal participation in the public life. Minority rights are not without controversy. Um, if we look first at the justifications as to why multiculturalists have supported minority rights, well, liberal multiculturalists would support them because they would say it guarantees individual freedom and personal autonomy in that culture or a secure embeddedness in your culture or a confidence in your culture allows you to live autonomous lives. And it helps immigrants to maintain their cultural identity, which is of central importance to personal identity. Minority rights can also be seen as a way of countering oppression. Particular importance is this notion of offence and the protection of minority groups from criticism and ridicule. Thirdly, they have been supported on the grounds they help redress social justice. They are, in effect, compensation for unfair disadvantages and underrepresentation over time. And these can be addressed through initiatives such as affirmative action. And then Kimlicka, again, very specifically justifying them in relation to national minorities or indigenous minorities. He said they were entitled to rights that go beyond those of groups that have formed as a result of, of immigration. The criticisms, and there are many and deep, is one that minority rights block integration into the larger society. For example, the wearing of the veil by Muslim women. Positive discrimination has been criticized by members of both the majority and minority groups. Uh, the former argue that minority rights can simply amount to unfair discrimination, while minority groups themselves might argue that minor these rights are demeaning and possibly counterproductive and patronizing. The idea of offense, or not being able to give offense, uh, runs clearly against traditional liberal rights, particularly freedom of expression. Offense especially concerns religious groups which consider certain beliefs to be sacred, therefore deserving of protection. And to criticize, insult, or even ridicule such beliefs as seen as an attack on the group itself. And if you think of the Satanic Verses or more recently, Charlie Hebdo. But the idea of not giving offence clearly contradicts these traditional liberal rights, especially freedom of expression. And finally, uh, there are tensions between minority rights, which are given to groups, and individual rights. The final core theme of multiculturalism is that of diversity. And in a multicultural society, multiculturalists argue that cultural diversity, rather than cultural unity, is not only compatible with, but is perhaps the best basis for political cohesion. Diversity is not just desirable or to be tolerated, but it should be, it should be celebrated. Multiculturalism suggests that people can have multiple identities and multiple loyalties. And they argue that this cultural recognition underpins political stability people are willing and able to participate in society 
precisely because they have a firm and secure identity rooted in their own culture. Conversely, the denial of cultural recognition, as we've mentioned before, simply results in isolation and powerlessness. Diversity, very similar to the liberal um, belief in diversity and toleration, benefits society at large. It brings not just stability, but vigor and, and vibrancy. And in this sense, it parallels ecological thinking, listing, linking systemic health and with diversity. Diversity also promotes cultural exchange between groups, promoting toleration, respect for difference, which in effect is the antidote to polarization and prejudice. However, there are also tensions um, between the celebration of diversity and multiculturalism itself. Multiculturalism emphasizes the embeddedness of individual identity within a particular cultural group, communitarianism, whereas by encouraging cultural exchange and mutual understanding, the extreme end example we will see is cosmopolitan multiculturalism, there is the risk of blurring the original group identity and creating a, a kind of pick and mix culture in which individuals have a shallower sense of their social and historical identity. And of course, as we see, there is the conservative criticism of diversity and that too much diversity can lead to instability. So there are four core themes of multiculturalism, post-colonialism, identity and culture, and minority rights and diversity. <laughs>